Hello, this is HT Wingnut, and today I want to talk about uh, mini PCs, in particular one based around the Intel Celeron N5105 CPU. What you see here in front of you are uh, four devices, these four guys here that are based on the Celeron N5105. I kind of showed the uh, ITX motherboard and the Raspberry Pi mother motherboard to kind of give you a sense for scale here. Um, so you can see here they're pretty small devices, except these are fully featured for the most part. Um, they come with a CPU embedded, uh, some, with, some with RAM, and a uh, EMMC SSD. In any case, uh, just because you're buying, say, an, a Celeron N5105 mini PC doesn't mean that they're all going to be the same. Okay, there are some differences. This is a low wattage CPU, and we'll go ahead and take a look at those specs here in a second. Okay, here we are at the Intel Celeron N5105 uh, product page at Intel. Real quick, just take a look at the specs. Um, you can see it's a quarter one 2021 launch date CPU. Uh, it's uh, based on the Jasper Lake, which I believe is 11th gen uh, Intel and uh, has a 10 nan nanometer process. It is a four core, four thread CPU with a peak of 2.9 gigahertz with a base frequency of two gigahertz. And it, it is a 10 watt TDP. Um, it does have uh, a max uh, RAM size of 16 gigabytes, but it does support DDR4, 2933 megahertz, and dual channel memory. It also has Intel integrated graphics, which is good for uh, encoding, especially if you use it for like Plex or something like that, 24 execution units, and it does support 4K, and all these devices, I have run them on 4K, on a 4K monitor, and it supports 4K 60 hertz just fine. Continuing on, it does have uh, eight PCIe Gen 3 lanes, and that's uh, you'll see that many of these have a uh, M.2 PCIe SSD support, uh, and it does support many uh, USB 3.2 slash 2.0 ports, and uh, also two, a couple of uh, SATA 6 gigabit per second ports. Now, the thing that you'll notice though, and each of these are configured a little differently, and where you'll see the difference is, even though this has a 10 watt T, sorry, my microphone conked out at the end there. So I uh, just want to summarize here in post-production what I was trying to say is that even though um, you see here that it has a 10 watt TDP and also it supports dual channel RAM, that doesn't mean that every uh, device is going to support that. Like the Melee in, it, in particular uh, it has single channel RAM and it only goes up to a 10 watt TDP, whereas the other ones like the B-Link and the Intel and even the uh, Latte Panda, they will exceed that 10 watt TDP up to like 13 to 15 watts so you can get added performance out of it. Okay, now that we've seen the specs, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, devices themselves. First of all, let's, this is the Melee uh, Quieter 3C, and uh, you can see here, quick look at all the ports and everything. I'll show a summary of everything at the end, but there's a front with a nice power button, three USB 3 ports on the side, a USB-C uh, with a display port out, uh, microphone and uh, headphone jack, dual uh, micro SD card slot, a uh, display port, mini display port, full size HDMI, and your USB C power input, and a gigabit Ethernet port there, and then a Kensington lock there in the bottom. There's not a whole lot. This is the uh, Latte Panda 3, and uh, it's basically a hobby board. You know, it's supposed to be something similar to like a Raspberry Pi, so there's really no case that comes with it. Um, but it does come with uh, onboard EMMC, 64 gigs, I believe, and then uh, 8 gigs of RAM. You can get various. Uh, RAM capacities too, but real quick, the ports in this guy are USB 3, three of those. It's got two uh, M.2 ports. One is a uh, NVMe, the other one is a SATA M.2. You can see the wireless card here with the antennas right there. It's got a, a gigabit Ethernet port, HDMI full size, USB-C power input, and a uh, headphone microphone jack there. And that's about it. You can see here that it's got the uh, uh, pinouts on the side here, a uh, Arduino for, uh, you know, you're adding uh, inputs to this device. The CPU obviously is underneath this fan here. And looking at the B-Link uh, U59, uh, this guy has two USB 3.0 uh, Type-A ports, a USB-C port, and then a headphone jack here. Just a headphone, I don't think, it, oh, it does have a microphone too. And then on the side, just ventilation, two USB 3 Type-A ports, two 
uh, gigabit LAN ports, two full-size HDMI ports, and a barrel jack for the power. And that's the thing you'll see is a lot of these, uh, the power uh, requirements are a little bit different for each of these two, which is kind of weird, but we'll take a look at this closer. There's power button. This is the uh, Intel uh, NUC 11. And uh, you can see here you've got the power button, two USB 3.0 ports, uh, type A. This is just a uh, access port here. Um, you've got separate speaker and headphone, sorry, microphone and headphone jacks there. Uh, ventilation on the side, Kensington lock, and then a full-size display port, a gigabit Ethernet port, two USB 2.0 ports, and two USB 3.0 ports, type A, HDMI slot, and a barrel power jack there. You can see this also has mounting provisions for like uh, going like back on the back of a monitor or on a wall or whatever else as well. None of these others have that. Well, it does have these couple of screw holes here. This one has a couple of uh, screw holes here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and disassemble these now so we can take a look at the inside of them. Okay, so first the uh, Melee Quieter 3C. It has four screws on the bottom. I have two removed already. I've already opened this up. But uh, all you've got to do is remove these four screws. Now this is upgradable to add your own uh, M.2 SSD. Okay, sorry for that little interruption there, but here we can take a look inside the uh, Melee Quieter 3C. And uh, real quick, we've got the M.2 2280 NVMe slot here. It comes with the screw over here, so it's across there. Um, you've got the CMOS battery, and then uh, you've got this comes with a 256 gigabyte uh, EMMC uh, storage on it. So you can have that as like your OS and an additional drive in there for additional content. You can see the uh, wireless it does come with the uh, Wi-Fi, I believe it comes with Wi-Fi 6 actually. I'll take a look at the specs more closely. And then the CPU and other guts of it, the RAM and everything, are soldered on here and it's on the other side of this board. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that real quick. Okay, so now before I take this off, notice that this uh, back panel actually has a pad in here. touches down here. This is where the CPU is at. So you'll see that it actually uh, evacuates heat through the PCB here onto here, onto this back plate. But also the same thing on the other side. You have to be very gentle when you remove this because this plate here can be very fragile. I wouldn't recommend doing this, just doing this to show you what's on the other side of here. Uh, I took the four screws out, and then you just pull this up. And then you can see here, you've got uh, the RAM right here, two RAM slots. Uh, I believe it is actually in dual channel. We'll take a look at that closer. And you've got the, uh, um, no, actually that is in single channel for some reason, even though they've got two chips. And then there's a CPU, which actually is just uh, pasted down to this uh, thermal pad here, which is touches down to a uh, metal plate. So that's that guy there. To reassemble this is real peculiar. Um, you have to kind of get this in be first. Okay. Three hours later. Okay. Now that we have that take back together, we'll, next we'll take a look at the uh, Intel NUC. And this is probably the easiest of them. Just the uh, four screws on the bottom, and they're captured screws so they don't come out. Right? And ta-da, that's all there is to it. You can see here um, this uh, pad here which touches down to the um, SSD to help cool it doesn't exactly touch down to everything so you might want to replace that pad if you have something like this. this is only, you can see that it's only touching part of the uh, SSD there. Now this device does not come with any uh, RAM or SSD so you have to add your own like this guy that comes with the onboard 256 gigabyte EMMC um, and the onboard RAM 8 gigs but this one you can actually add more RAM to it plus it runs in dual channel as opposed to single channel. 
Now to access the, uh, well real quick, let's take a look at, uh, you obviously have the RAM slots here, SSD slot here, and uh, those are easily removable and insertable just like a laptop. Let's pull these little posts apart, voila. And then this SSD, it is an M.2 NVMe. And I put a uh, WD Blue 500 gigabyte in there. And then it also has the uh, Wi-Fi card underneath that. So to actually access the CPU and the RAM and or the other components, you have to remove the uh, screws here. And just like that, you have access to this guy here. You can see here it's got the uh, full-size cooling fan and everything. And you notice on this one it had no cooling fan at all. So this one's completely silent. Um, this one actually has a little bit of fan home, but it's not so bad. And uh, it has a single thermal pipe. And uh, you'll see why they also have this here, because this is a 10-watt TDP CPU like we saw. Um, this is actually, uh, you can run it at a higher TDP as well. So this active air cooling helps keep the temperatures under control. I'm not going to take this off at the moment. Now oh, what the heck. Let's go ahead and uh, remove this heat sink. CMOS battery there. And there's the uh, fan off of there, and then there's the CPU underneath this nice elaborate little uh, heat sink here. Not sure what this guy does, but it may touch down to the. Okay. Six and a half hours later. Okay, that's two down, two to go. Next we'll take a look at the Latte Panda Delta 3 and uh, not much to show here. Obviously there's no case so all we can see here is that it's got the uh, active cooling fan over the CPU and this also comes with the 64 gig onboard uh, EMMC and also 8 gigs of RAM which I believe are in dual channel mode on this guy. I'll have to double check that as well. And then finally we've got the B-Link U59. Um, it's very similar to the Intel NUC except this one actually comes with uh, you can order it with uh, RAM and SSD in it. Um, it also has the option of not only a NVMe uh, M.2, but also a regular SATA 2.5 inch drive that you can add in here as well. So it's got some flexibility there. And uh, it's the only one I've seen too that has a clear CMOS button on the outside. But to access this, it just has four screws on the bottom. One, two, three. And there we go. Okay. Now if we can see that, see here you've got the uh, interface for a SATA SSD. Um, it looks like it can fit, definitely can fit a regular 7mm SSD in there. I think that's the most, yep, that's the thickest it can fit. So, And it actually just has a regular SATA connector inside. You probably can't see that too well. So you can just slide in your hard drive or SSD in there and plug it right in. You can see here you've got the uh, um, M.2, oh I'm sorry, this has an M.2 SATA, um, not a NVMe SSD. This is the B-Link. 
underneath this, similar to this guy, it has the uh, um, Wi-Fi card underneath. And then the RAM. In this case, this is 16 gigs. And then looks like a CPU is uh, on the other side of this motherboard here. So let's see how we access that. We've got one, two, three, four screws. Wow. Yeah, he, oh, there we go. Oh no, so you may have broken something. One of the Wi Fi. Oh, it didn't. Oh, great. May have to fix that. Yep, it looks like it's uh, soldered to the um, case right here, and I ripped that off. So be careful if you ever disassemble one of these. But uh, you can see here, here's the. Everything is so. Let me remove this. I don't need to break this cable here. This should be easy to fix. This should not. This could be difficult. So, what do we do here? Well, I better not mess with that either. So we'll try to do this as carefully as we can. But you can see the... Uh, get this clear here. Like the Intel. Got the fan on top of the CPU. And voila, there we go. Now I could take all this off, but you're all going to see the same CPU underneath there as is on the, all of the other uh, machines. And uh, CMOS battery there. Okay, you can see on the uh, SSD they provide, uh, it says AZW512G M.2 SAT SSD. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Peel this off. Uh, there's no real identifying marks on there as well. Let's see if we can get a better look at the... Uh, the labeling. I'll try to get a good picture of that. Okay, it looks like this is a uh, it says Maxo or something, some sort of controller, and there is no markings whatsoever on the NAND flash. So this is definitely some cheap generic um, drive, but hey, if it works, that's all you need. I'm gonna put this back. You can see here it's got the BNM key here. Um, so that means that it's SATA. It doesn't just have the single key, which a uh, NVMe drive would have. So there's all four. So there's all four of your uh, Celeron N5105 drives uh, with the internals exposed. Okay, so now let's take a look at the uh, power adapters for these devices. They're all markedly different, which is interesting. Um, for the Intel NUC 11, um, you've got this guy here, which has a barrel connector. It's got the three pin uh, power connector, and then it has an output of uh, 19 volt, 3.42 amp, which is what, 65 watt? Yeah. This is for the B-Link. And uh, this also has a barrel connector, but it's just a two-prong wall wart. And the uh, adapter settings show 12 volt, 3,000 uh, milliamps, so 36 watt power adapter. Then for the Melee um, Quieter 3C, again, it's a wall wart, but it's a USB-C type, uh, two-prong, and it has an adapter for either European or US plugs on here. They just removes. They give you both. And then uh, output is 12 volt, um, 2 amps. So this is 24 watt. And then finally, this Latte Panda Delta 3 is interesting. It comes with a two prong uh, power adapter and it uses USB C to power it. And it comes with uh, multiple outputs actually. It's a, 
uh, 5 volt, 3 amp, 9 volt, 3 amp, 12 volt, um, 3 amp, 15 volt, 3 amp, and 20 volt, 2 and a quarter amp. So looks like it goes high as 45 watts out of this little guy here. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and take a look at the BIOS for each of these devices. BIOS is, not sure the plural BIOS, but anyways, first you can see here we've got the uh, Melee Quieter 3C. And as we go through these BIOS options, you'll see that there's lots and lots of settings here. Now just because the settings are shown, it doesn't mean that uh, all those settings are actually supported or usable. A lot of times on some of these devices I've found that they add the option or they just unlock the entire BIOS even though the actual options aren't usable. So even though you see all these here, um, they may not necessarily even be functional. So anyways, I'm going to scroll through this, probably take about a minute per device and uh, take a look at it, the different uh, BIOS options here in case you want to see. So it should only take a few minutes here, then we'll get back to uh, benchmarking and uh, other performance metrics. Here is a summary of the benchmarks we're going to take a look at and some of the results from those benchmarks. And first up, we've got Cinebench R23, 
7 zip, we zip and unzip a, a large number of files and then using handbrake to encode a video. And then also network transfer over wired and wireless, both gigabit Ethernet and uh, Wi Fi 802.11ac. Total system power draw, both at idle and max, and using a few different programs. And then finally, some gaming benchmarks. This is by no means a uh, actual gaming device, but it's always interesting to see the performance and how well the Intel GPU can perform. Oh, I also forgot to mention that we're going to take a look at uh, SSD performance because we've got M.2 NVMe, we've got M.2 SATA, and we've got 2.5 inch SATA, and also USB performance as it relates to, uh, you've got uh, Gen 2 and Gen 1 uh, USB as well. So we'll take a look at that. First up, we have Cinebench R23, and we're going to kind of use this as our overall benchmark to, to test the uh, CPU performance as far as temperature, clock speed, TDP, etc. But uh, first of all, we have here the uh, actual Cinebench score. And just to explain here real quick, the horizontal axis here, you can see the different devices that were tested. And I tried to give a, keep a convention throughout the testing uh, as far as the results shown here. So the pink is Melee Quieter 3C. The blue, both light blue and dark blue, are the Intel NUC 11. Light blue is with dual channel RAM. Dark blue is with single channel RAM because it has a replaceable SODIMS. So I just pop the chip out to run in single channel mode. Uh, so the blue is 16 gigabyte dual channel. Uh, blue is 8 gigabyte single channel. And then uh, the Latte Panda 3 is 8 gigabyte soldered on single channel RAM. And then the B Link U59 is SODIMM, two SODIMM slots like the Intel. But I ran that only in uh, dual channel mode with 16 gigabytes. And again, the uh, Melee Quieter 3C is single channel RAM soldered 8 gigabyte. So you can see here the results. Um, the Intel NUC 11 and the B-Link U59 pulled ahead a little bit. And part of that reason is probably, as you'll see, is the uh, both probably the dual channel RAM, but also because the TDP can run higher on both of these machines. Uh, single core didn't matter a whole lot of difference. Um, you can see here also a gray device here. This is the Intel Core i3-10105, just to kind of give you a reference for another CPU. So after running the CPU, sorry, the Cinebench R23 benchmark, uh, I recorded a bunch of metrics for it. Here you can see the CPU clock speed. Uh, the B-Link and the Intel, you can see across the board, maintain a solid 2700 megahertz um, throughout the entirety of the test, whereas the uh, Latte Panda Delta 3 dropped down a little bit to about 2600 megahertz and popped back up a little higher near the end of the test. Then the uh, Melee Quieter 3C uh, started off at about 2600 megahertz, but then stuck at around 2300 megahertz for the entirety of the rest of the test. Now we also look, can look at the CPU package power, which is really the TDP of the device. And uh, so throughout the entirety of the test, the B-Link actually maintained about a 14 watt uh, package power for the CPU and uh, the Intel NUC 11 about 12 to 13 and then uh, the Latte Panda Delta 3 started at about 11 then dropped down to about 10 watt. Now keep in mind that the actual TDP of the CPU is 10 watt so anything above that is uh, pushing it beyond its, its intended TDP. Uh, then finally we have the Melee Quieter 3C which uh, starts out at 10 watts and then drops down to 8 watts throughout the rest of the test which is likely what resulted in the lower performance. And then finally, we look at the actual CPU temps throughout the Cinebench R23 uh, test. And the B-Link U59 um, maintained about 80C. And I also wanted to mention that uh, the Intel NUC 11, Latte Panda Delta 3, and the B-Link U59 all have active cooling, right? They all have some form of fan uh, pushing air across the CPU here, whereas the Melee Quieter 3C is just passive, passively cooled. So you, that's why you see here it, it actually increases in temperature over time because there's nothing to evacuate the heat except for the ambient air. And uh, Intel NUC 11 performed the best at about 62C to 65C throughout the entirety of the test. Now as far as peak surface temperatures are concerned, this is the actual touch surface on the top of the device. Um, you can see here that the you can see here that the Melee Quieter 3C peaked at about 66 Celsius, and that was on a large portion of the top surface. So uh, that's actually really uncomfortable to touch. Uh, so I just uh, be advised of that. And uh, because of that, I also ran it with uh, 
a USB fan. I propped it up on a couple of bottle caps, put a USB fan next to it just to give it a little bit of active cooling, and it, it actually ended up only running at about 50C after that. And I actually ran some other metrics with regards to that too to see if it actually improved performance or not. Quick answer, no, but we'll take a look at that in a second. Now, the other devices here don't look too bad. Uh, the Latte Panda Delta 3, the 58 degrees Celsius actually was just a small point in the center of the heat sink. So it uh, really was not that uncomfortable to the touch. So it wasn't too terrible. Now we look at the Melee Quieter 3C, both uh, with cooling and without cooling. The red represents it uh, with passive cooling or just no, no active cooling, no fan running across it. And then that's the red. And then the orange is the uh, same device that's propped up on a couple of bottle caps with a small USB fan running across it. And you can see here that the idle temp actually did not uh, decrease by a whole lot, maybe a couple degrees C. And the actual surface temps without cooling was 38 C and the peak surface temp was only about 36 C at idle, which at idle you don't expect to see much. These little blips here are more than likely just windows doing what it does sometimes. Um, so, but it's neither here nor there. At idle, it's about uh, 32C and 35C. Now, throughout the entirety of the Cinemench R23 test, you can see here um, that uh, with passive cooling, it started at about 60C, went up to close to 80C, whereas with the uh, little bit amount of active cooling, it didn't really exceed 60C, maybe 62C at the end here. So it really made a difference there. But as far as uh, <coughs> the core clocks of this machine, of the CPU, um, even though I added extra cooling, it really didn't affect the actual core clocks of the device. So it's really there for, uh, if you wanna reduce the surface temp by a little bit. The next test is the seven zip test, basically just taking a folder filled with a bunch of files, 2.65 gigabytes with about 21,000 files in total, and then measuring the time it takes to compress that folder and then decompress the folder. So you can see here on the bottom, you got the total time in seconds. And uh, the Melee Quieter 3C and the single channel RAM version of the Intel NUC 11 both took considerably longer than the other devices here. And But when it came to unzipping, they all were pretty much on par. The weird thing is that the B-Link U59, for whatever reason, was twice as fast. I ran it a few times and it ended up with the same result. So I can't explain that one. The next test was Handbrake. And basically this is a program, if you're not familiar, which will allow you to uh, convert formats of video files, uh, reduce the file size of video files, obviously while sacrificing some detail. But took a 36 gigabyte Blu-ray 1080p two hour long movie, used the uh, fast 1080p 30 setting in it and let it go. Um, the total, the scale here on the bottom is in minutes. So yeah, it took quite a while with this meager CPU, but you can see here we have both the CPU and QuickSync. And what QuickSync is, is many Intel CPUs include that uh, protocol and the, the CPU, which allows it to uh, do some hardware encoding. And as you can see here, it results in much faster encoding. So obviously smaller is better here because right, it took less time to encode that file. Uh, so this shows you that, you know, if you can ever have the advantage or option of using either the CPU or using like Intel QuickSync or NVIDIA encoding option or any other type of hardware or video encoding, you're going to get much improved performance. So overall, because um, this took like a good uh, three and a half hours on the Melee Quieter 3C to encode the video, these other ones didn't take uh, much less, about three hours to do the same thing. Uh, but using the QuickSync, you can see here it cut it down to about 25 to 30 percent of the time. So definitely an improvement uh, using QuickSync. Now, as far as uh, network files are concerned, uh, this is the network transfer test using both the wired gigabit ethernet and the wireless 802.11ac Wi-Fi, uh, copying 101 gigabyte files across the network. And uh, over here at the bottom, you can see the transfer speed, that's a megabyte per second, and then that's average megabyte per second. And then the uh, over on the vertical here, we've got the different tests that were run. You can see here, we've got uh, gigabit ethernet LAN, and just so you know that uh, the maximum theoretical speed over gigabit ethernet is 125 megabytes per second or 1000 megabit per second, right? Um, 
and realistically 112 to 113 megabytes per second is pretty typical uh, maximum realistic speed that you're going to see. Now when I say write LAN and read LAN, write means writing to the device, read means reading from the device over the LAN, and then same thing on the wireless, uh, both sitting uh, about six feet away under the access point and also in a different room running through a couple walls about 25 feet away from the access point. For whatever reason, I thought it was interesting that uh, the read and write speeds on a couple of these devices um, actually did not even get close to the 112 megabytes per second transfer speed, which is surprising because usually um, that's no issue for most devices to saturate a gigabit Ethernet uh, network. Now the actual power draw from the wall is listed here. This is the average power draw through each of these activities. And uh, I didn't show the peak here. Maybe I should have added an extra line on there. But either way, uh, the peak power draw usually did not go more than a couple watts over this. But this was your typical average power draw for each of these activities. And uh, you can see here, this is listed in watts. This was measured basically taken from the wall using a, a device that you plug the power outlet or the power plug into from the device to the wall. So it actually took a measurement of the actual power draw of the device. And this is uh, boot up, you can see here, idle, uh, watching a video file, both on VLC or YouTube, uh, doing a file transfer over gigabit ethernet and wireless, then also running Cinnamon Char 23, running Handbrake, and uh, Cyberpunk and Tomb Raider game benchmarks. So overall, you can see that the uh, B-Link is the highest power usage. I guess the Intel NUC 11 is a sec close second. Uh, running about 25 to 26 watt power draw from the wall. Whereas the Latte Panda Delta 3 and the Melee use significantly less. But part of that is probably also due to the uh, lower TDP. and also results in somewhat lower performance. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the performance of the SSDs on these devices. Now it's not as straightforward as I would have liked because there's actually four different kinds of SSDs that are across these four different devices and not each one has the same uh, type of SSD support. But uh, the four types are M.2 NVMe, which is like this guy here, and uh, it's got uh, the M key, which is that slot right there. And uh, that tells the system that it's a, an NVMe drive. And usually the NVMe ones are the fastest drives out of all the SSDs, and it uses PCIe lanes. Now the M.2, SATA drive looks very similar to the M.2 uh, NVMe drive. The difference is you can see the slot here uh, that tells the system that it's a SATA drive and your system has to support the SATA uh, M.2 port. Um, so just keep that in mind. But either way, this uses that's called the B key. And you can see it also, also has a BNM key. Some devices actually just use the M key and it just auto detects whether it's SATA or NVMe. So, anyways, this is similar in performance to the two and a half inch. Um, SATA 3 drive like a regular two and a half inch drive like you see here probably familiar with it and uh, it usually runs about 600 megabytes per second and then lastly we've got uh, EMMC which is an embedded uh, or soldered uh, SSD it's usually slower than SATA drives and uh, it's really just kind of modified uh, flash drive so there's no real uh, any DRAM support or anything on it it's just kind of uh, uh, to give you some options uh, cheap options to embed it on uh, a device so in any case, um, a convention here, we've got Melee Quieter 3C in the upper left, Latte Banda Delta 3 in the upper right, Intel NUC 11 in the lower left, and B-Link U59 in the lower right. We're going to use a Crystal Disk Mark as our benchmark here just to kind of measure general performance of the SSD ports. Uh, the first one up is the M.2 NVMe and uh, used a SN, sorry, Western Digital SN570 M.2 NVMe drive 500 gigabyte um, to test in each of these devices. And all of them support an M.2 NVMe slot, except for the B-Link U U59. So you can see here that the performance between the NUC 11 and the Quieter 3C are similar. The, the uh, Quieter 3C seems to do better overall. But then you look at the Latte Panda Delta 3, and for some reason its performance is significantly less than these other guys here. So I'm uh, not sure why that is, but uh, those are your results. Then on to the uh, M.2 SATA SSD. Um, a team group uh, SSD was used 
uh, on the latte pan to Delta 3. Then the B link came with its own uh, SATA SSD, M.2 SATA SSD. So I just used that for this test. Um, so they're not the direct apples to apples comparison, but just to, just to see if it's able to uh, utilize the full uh, SATA 3 uh, performance. And uh, only the latte Panda Delta 3 and B link supported the M.2 SATA SSD. And uh, moving on, now we've got the regular 2.5 inch uh, SATA drive and only the B-Link U59 supported a 2.5 inch SATA slot. And here's the results here, pretty typical of a uh, uh, SATA SSD. It pushes the limits there, approaching 600 megabyte per second, typical theoretical uh, limit. Then next we have the EMMC, which is... Um, only present on the quieter 3C and the Latte Panda Delta 3. So, and since they are embedded, there's no way to remove them and swap them and kind of compare. But either way, you can see here performance is similar between the two. And uh, if you look, compare that with the SATA drive, you can see it's the SATA drive is at least twice the performance, if not more, than the EMMC. So, next, we're actually going to test the uh, USB ports. Now, keep in mind that there are a couple uh, different types of USB ports here, a few actually. We're only gonna test the USB 3, and there's USB 3.2 Gen 1, which is about five gigabit per second or 500 megabyte per second, and USB 3.2 Gen 2, which is about 10 gigabit per second or about 1,000 megabytes per second. Now I used a, uh, a USB to NVMe adapter and uh, plugged in the uh, WD SN570 WD Blue uh, NVMe drive into that and use that as a benchmark because it can easily saturate or get close to saturating that 1000 megabyte per second speed. Now I just wanted to make note because there are the two types of uh, USB generations on there. They're not clearly marked on e any of the devices so I kind of went through and kind of had to determine which device has what uh, speeds where and just for reference the Melee Quieter 3C has uh, looking at it uh, from this perspective here over on the uh, the left or the front and the middle one those are gen 2 ports the rear one's gen 1 and the latte latte panda delta 3 the furthest left port is gen 2 and the other two ports are gen 1 um, on the intel NUC 11 the the usb ports in the front are gen 1 and the usb ports in the rear are gen 2 then uh, on the b-link u59 the front ports are Gen 2 and the rear ports are Generation 1. So there's no convention there. It's just, you know, some have 2 and 2, some have 1 and 2. So just uh, be cognizant of that. So first we're going to take a look at the uh, Gen 1. And uh, you can see here across all four devices that uh, performance is pretty similar. So there's really no bottlenecks amongst any of them. Uh, but you can see there that it's uh, running at about 460, 450 megabytes per second sequential. Uh, not, so it's running close to the uh, 500 megabyte per second theoretical maximum. And then we look at the Gen 2, and you can see they're pretty comparable, again, amongst all the devices. Uh, and it also actually hits that, uh, exceeds that 1000 megabyte per second threshold with a sequential read speed. So uh, performing pretty well there. And you notice that it actually performs better on the Latte Panda Delta 3 over the USB port than it does over the actual NVMe slot. So that's kind of odd. Now on to the game benchmarks. You can see here we've got uh, 3D Mark scores. This is really for convention's sake. Nothing really to see here. Anything out of the ordinary other than this Melee Quieter 3C. For whatever reason, the Time Spy CPU benchmark is significantly less. But again, that could be because of the lower TDP. Um, now, here's actual game benchmarks, and what you see here, the vertical axis is the FPS, horizontal is the actual game benchmark that was run, and uh, the darker shade of color is, represents the 1% low FPS, the lighter shade of color represents the average FPS, and uh, looking at Batman Arkham City here, you can see that 1% low FPS was 1 FPS. This one is the one anomaly. I don't know why it's like that because it actually ran quite well. There was no hitching or bumping while running the test. So uh, I think that's just an anomaly. The rest here should be pretty representative of what the actual results of the benchmark were. And uh, obviously Cyberpunk 27, 2077, I didn't expect it to do well. But it actually performed 
remarkably better than I thought it would. It actually got a, I wouldn't say playable frame rate, but usable. Uh, and uh, another set of tests here. So here we had GTA 4 actually played pretty well. GTA 5 as well. It was actually somewhat playable, especially on the B-Link U U59. And then uh, Hitman, Just Cause 2, Mafia 2, Definitive, Shadow of Mordor, Tiny Tina's Wonderland. I didn't expect that much out of that. That was a disaster as far as the benchmark on this was concerned. And then Tomb Raider and Warhammer 2. And then finally, we have the uh, summary of all the devices and uh, their specifications or options that they have. Real quick here, we look at the uh, HDMI. They all have HDMI 2.0. Um, they all have display port of some port, of some of some kind, except for the B-Link. Um, that's because it has two HDMI but no display port, and the display port on the Melee is actually over uh, USB Type C. And then the USB, the uh, power delivery for the Melee and the Latte Panda Delta 3 is both over USB C. And then over network, they all have the Gigabit Ethernet and the 802.11. Actually, a couple of them had 802.11 AX. I wasn't able to test that because I don't have an AX router. And then they all have headphone and mic jacks of some sort. And then the Latte Panda and the Melee both had a micro SD card slot, whereas the NUC 11 the B-Link did not. And then as far as power delivery, we kind of looked at that earlier. There's that. And then the next slide here is more details on the specs. They obviously all have the same CPU. As far as RAM, you've got single channel soldered of 8 gigabyte on both the Melee and the Latte Panda. And then the B-Link and the Intel NUC both have SODIMM uh, slots in them for dual channel support as well. Then the uh, Melee offered an EMMC module as well as a Latte Panda Delta 3 that was standard on the Latte Panda. And the Melee, you could get an option of 64, 128, 256, or 512 gigabyte. In this case, I got the 256 gigabyte. And then as far as cooling, they all had active cooling with a fan of some sort, except for the Melee was passive. And then OS included. Um, the Windows 11 Pro was in the Melee. There was no OS, no uh, C, sorry, no OS, no RAM, no storage on the Intel NUC 11, so you had to buy all that in addition to that to get it to up and running. And the B-Link came with Windows 11 Pro, and the Latte Panda Delta 3 came with no OS, but the Windows 10 LTSC Enterprise was optional, which I opted for. <clears throat> and then also note that the Latte Panda Delta 3 um, is a, a hobby board, so it has extra connectors, a ton of extra connectors on it, including the Arduino headers there, um, so you can connect uh, extra devices to it. As far as pricing, this is as of uh, February 2023, what I could find online, and pretty similar to what I paid for these. But uh, you can see here the Intel NUC 11 is the cheapest, but again, you also have to add your own RAM, your own storage, and your own OS. And uh, overall, I think the uh, B-Link U59 um, is the best deal here because it uh, comes with 16 gigs of RAM and 500 gigabyte hard drive for only about 220 bucks. And compare that with the Melee, which is $229, but it only comes with 8 gigs of RAM and uh, 256 gigabyte EMMC. Okay, so that about wraps that up for now. And uh, But before I go, I'd like to show you kind of what you can do with a device like this. Because when uh, they start adding things like uh, M.2 slots, those are actually... Uh, PCIe Express slots, just like you'd find on a uh, desktop hard drive, you can get adapters. So you can run things like, let me show you here. Uh, here I've got an adapter, M.2 um, PCIe, over to this uh, full-size uh, 16x uh, PCIe 3.0 slot. So I can actually run a, a graphics card in here. Now this one is a 1050 Ti, and uh, because it's uh, under 75 watt TDP, it can pull power directly from the slot. Whereas I'm also going to try this 1080 Ti, and I'm going to have to hook up an ATX power supply, but it's neither here nor there. I'm going to probably do a whole other video on that. But you can see here that uh, it does allow you to actually get better performance than the integrated graphics, of course. Um, and uh, in addition to that, you could do things like this uh, SATA adapter. So this one will allow you to add up to six SATA ports to the any of these devices. And then this is also a SAS adapter, which will... Each of these plugs will allow you to uh, hook up uh, four SATA devices as well. So you could use it to basically make a, a small 
uh, compact NAS if you'd like to. And I'm planning on doing both of the, that, uh, a couple of these devices in the near future. Uh, but you can see here, here's Cyberpunk 2077 benchmark, 720p low settings. Um, not real impressive at uh, 20 FPS, I guess, but considering compare that with 7 or 8 FPS, and that's just on the 1050 Ti. 1080 Ti, I did do a bench on that real quick, and uh, definitely runs much better. Uh, but I'll go through all those details in a little bit. So I'll let this run here for a minute, and then uh, I'd like to thank you for tuning in. Until next time, talk to you later.